Hello there, I'm Machine Day and I hope you're doing really, really well. I hope you're having a great day. In this video, I'm going to go through nine things that you can do to enable a more stable and secure and consistent stream. This is when using Streamlabs OBS and OBS Studio, but will also apply in many regards of the things that I mentioned here to other streaming platforms as well. For example, XSplit, OBS.Live and so on and so forth. Having a stable stream is obviously quite important. It can literally directly affect your income if you're relying on the income, cutoffs on stream and and unstable connections to stream and things like that can really make a big difference to the experience that your users have and therefore their likelihood to come back. And of course, the more views you have, the more you grow. So some of these things that I mentioned here are quite important to potentially the growth that you experience. A lot of these things are very, very simple. You can apply these things within a five or 10 minute period to your stream and it can make a huge, huge difference. So these are just things that I've learned over the course of the time that I've personally been streaming. As always, guys, if you find this useful, hit the like button because that definitely helps me. I'd appreciate it a lot. Feel free to subscribe to the channel. And if you want to check me out at twitch.tv forward slash machine Dana. Yeah, come and say hi if you want or not. I don't really care. Just enjoy the video. Okay, so the first one's quite straightforward and it should be something that you're doing anyway. This doesn't just benefit your stream, but it can make a difference. Making sure that your Windows is up to date, that's pretty straightforward. But also making sure that your other drivers are up to date, particularly your display drivers and your graphics drivers. Now, there's a few different ways you can do this. I use a program called Driver Easy. I don't have a referral code for this, unfortunately. I probably should try and get one. I've used this for about a year now and this literally scans your whole computer for all of your drivers and it'll basically say, yes, you need updates for this driver or that driver or no, all your drivers are fully up to date. It doesn't take long at all. The scans normally take a minute and then the updates normally take another minute or two. I tend to do this every like week or two just to make sure my drivers are up to date. This is really important because computers are kind of sensitive souls. Also, developers can be idiots. Developers will do something in their program and it can sometimes conflict with a number of different things, including potentially your stream and that can cause problems and then that can cause disconnections. It doesn't happen often, but it can happen. Driver easy, I think the cost is around about 30 or $40 per year. So it's not super expensive but there may be other products out there that you can recommend and if you do have better products than this or the suggestions drop in the comments below the second thing on the list here that you can do to have a more stable stream is to throttle your own outputs and that sounds like a really generic term you don't necessarily need to stream in the absolute maximum quality really stretching your pc to the max the whole time many times for example most people won't notice the difference between a 1080p and a 900p stream the quality difference is actually quite minimal so if you're finding that you have an unstable stream but most of the time you can run a 1080 dropping down to a 900p resolution on the output for the stream might just be the thing that makes the difference to have your stream a little bit more stable many people stream at 900 anyway because it's a little bit more accessible but there's also other things you can do to throttle your outputs as well for example within the profiles within Streamlabs OBS and OBS Studio you can set the quality to be a little bit lower which then improves some of the performance of the device which of course can affect stability of your PC I have done another video about this for Streamlabs OBS and I'll link those four videos in the description below. These four videos are basically like diagnosing best settings for Streamlabs OBS but then also within game and also whilst you're streaming what else you can do within the software. Feel free to take a look at those if you're still experiencing issues after watching this video. Throttling your outputs just means that you're leaving a little bit of kind of performance in the tank for when your PC experiences some sort of issues. For example a driver issue that we talked about earlier. If your PC is being maxed out at the absolute top quality settings the whole time that might not leave a lot in the tank particularly if you've got weaker hardware or maybe some key bottlenecks for example processor or a weak graphics card other things that you can try in terms of throttling you can reduce down the bit rate say for example you're streaming at 6,000 kilobits per second dropping this down to 5,000 kilobits per second particularly if you pair this with a resolution change down to 900p can make a bit of a difference there as well and again it just means that the encoders not having to work as hard the next one's pretty easy as well really really quick if you can remember to right click and run as administrator whenever you run Streamlabs OBS XSplit OBS Studio or whatever running as administrator just means that you're telling the computer that as an authority on your computer you are prioritizing that application and it just means that the likelihood of the broadcasting software crashing versus for example a game or a, something else that you're doing on stream crashing it changes the priority order in terms of processing there's also something else we can do which we'll get onto in the, later on in the video but running as administrator I found can make a 
huge difference in terms of how your PC handles the application. The thing is, it's recoverable if a game crashes, but that your broadcast is still live. But if your broadcast goes down, even though the game is still running, you don't really have a choice at that point. You're having to reconnect and there's a load of other issues. And all by the time you connect back, some of your viewership will have left. So it is definitely better that the game crashes rather than your stream crashes. Always run as administrator when you go live. The fourth thing you can do, you may find that some of the plugins that you've installed, particularly if you're running like a very plugin heavy rig, are causing conflicts either with each other or with the core streaming software which can cause crashes this is a little bit of a ball ache to sort out because you're actually having to try and diagnose which plugin is causing the problem if you're finding that there are plugin conflicts or there's regular crashes it quite possibly could be one single plugin that's the source of those crashes so you may need to try uninstalling some of the plugins and just trying to locate what the likely issue is this is obviously a lot more easy to work out if you've recently installed a plugin and then you recently start getting crashes and bugs and instabilities but it may not be obvious and that just means you're going to have to do a little bit of phishing and that means you may have to do some uninstallation work and reinstallation work it is a ball ache, but it can mean the difference between a stable or an unstable stream so it's definitely worth the time to investigate if you've exhausted some of the other options another thing you can do here within the settings within streamlabs obs and also obs studio i'm illustrating of course on obs studio here within the advanced tab there is a within the general section here a process priority if you set the process priority to high this sets within Within Windows, OBS Studio as a high priority application within Task Manager. And it means that if there are throttling issues or performance issues on your PC, this application is going to be prioritized and therefore all the processes that hang off this, for example, the encoding of your stream will be handled in a higher priority way from a Windows point of view. This goes really well hand in hand with running as administrator also. Just to illustrate within Streamlabs OBS here, in the advanced tab, we've got the process priority set to high. As a minimum, set it above normal, but I would recommend recommend setting it to high, particularly if you've got medium to high level hardware that you're working with with your PC. The sixth thing you can try here, and again, we're still in the same settings within OBS Studio in the advanced tab is sources and the browser source hardware acceleration. Now, it probably goes without saying that you should deactivate browser sources that you are either not using very often or not using at all. That's not going to help your stream if you've got, let's say, 50 browser sources and you're only using 10 of them. You're asking your PC to do more things, more processes, and that, of course, is going to cause some instabilities. So that's kind of like a rudimentary thing that you can do, but enabling browser source hardware acceleration, by default, I believe this actually is tagged as on. If you find that you're getting a lot of bugs, personally, I found, for example, within Discord and in other applications, when I had weaker hardware, disabling this actually made a big difference. So disabling browser source hardware acceleration rather than enabling it meant that browser source hardware acceleration did not happen within the software. I don't really know much about hardware acceleration, but what I do know is that when it's enabled, the software will try and reassign resources from other bits of hardware for example, like your sound card or your, your graphics card or like your whatever, okay? But it, 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 it spreads it out, okay? It spreads it out. Problem is, by doing that in itself is a process and there might be some compatibility issues, some instability issues. If you've got strong hardware, you are not going to have a problem running hardware acceleration in most applications. If you've got weaker hardware, particularly if you've got a weaker GPU graphics card, I would recommend turning this off. You may find that some of the bugs you've experienced disappear. And again, within Streamlabs OBS, within the Advanced tab, enable browser source hardware acceleration requires a restart. You can just check this off and that might help you. We're getting towards the end of the list here, number seven, and these are things that you probably only really want to try as a last resort if you're experiencing issues. You can try adding a stream delay to your stream. This will mean that some of your memory usage is used up because there's like a buffer of storage that's kept before you then send it up to the encoder within Streamlabs OBS or OBS Studio. But enabling a stream delay and increasing the duration of that delay, so a delay to your stream to your viewers, enables you to tag this thing here, which is preserve cutoff, increase delay when reconnecting. And what this just means is if you disconnect, you've got a buffer time, let's say, of 20 seconds built in as the delay. If it takes you 10 seconds to reconnect, if you've got this preserve cutoff point unchecked, what will happen is OBS Studio will allow eating into some of that buffer time whilst it reconnects. And then instead of having, let's say, a 20 second delay, if it's taken you 10 seconds to reconnect, there will then be a 10 second delay. So it just increases that buffer time. But of course, the difference there is the latency and the communication between you and your viewers is higher. And therefore, it's a less real time experience for your viewers. So there's a little bit of trade off here. And again, 
fine. This is probably one of those things you want to try as a last resort. So you want to make sure that this preserve cutoff is actually turned off, which then allows OBS to use some of that time in case of disconnection. Number eight, you can add disconnection protection. This is in beta at the moment from Twitch. Of course, assuming that you stream on Twitch and not Facebook or YouTube gaming. What this does is it just allows a 90 second period of time where you're troubleshooting if you disconnect. There will be like a placeholder image on your stream from Twitch showing that you're having disconnection issues and it just allows you a little bit of extra time to troubleshoot that and basically just reconnect. You just need to be aware here that this does require the use of a major encoder to work properly and the major encoder here refers to the software that you are using. So for example, Streamlabs OBS is a major encoder, OBS Studio X split. If you're using sort of a bizarre or rare sort of underutilized low supported streaming broadcasting software, it may not be compatible with disconnection protection here. So you do just need to be aware of that. But of course you can test this out by just going live with the disconnection protection, disconnecting and just seeing what happens on your stream to see if this actually works. The final thing I'm going to recommend here is with automatic reconnections on your stream. And this just means within Streamlabs OBS or OBS Studio, the software will try and reconnect if it has a disconnection without you pressing the disconnect button. If you press the disconnect button, it's not a disconnection because you've done that manually and the software knows that you've clicked the button to stop broadcasting. But if there is some sort of disconnection, having the automatic reconnect enabled will help. I think by default on OBS Studio and Streamlabs OBS, this is ticked as enabled with a 15 second retry delay, which basically means every single 15 seconds it will try to reconnect if you disconnect. But then you can also set the maximum retries as well. I think this is set at 20 by default. What I've chosen to try here is reducing the retry delay so it retries to connect every five seconds and then I'm increasing the number of maximum retries that it does. This is particularly useful if you're doing a really, really long stream because let's say if you're away from your screen for a minute or two and there's a disconnection, it'll basically automatically try and resolve it. And this in conjunction with the disconnection protection from Twitch is quite a powerful stability tool to use. So they have it nine Oh, maybe there was like an extra one in there, a bonus. Yeah, well, well done. You get a bonus one. Happy days. <laughs> Things that you can do to increase the stability of your stream and to try and prevent bugs and to increase the likelihood that you're going to run a smooth stream through OBS Studio, Streamlabs OBS, but also many of those things apply to XSplit and OBS.Live and other streaming platforms that you may use too. Also, please let me know, because of course I enjoy positive enforcement. Let me know if it worked for you. In particular, let other people know the things that you did that worked, because it may be of those nine or 10 things based on user-generated feedback that some of those things work better than others. Personally, I think that running as administrator is one of the more powerful things to do, and of course, throttling your stream as well. If you enjoyed this, hit the like, hit the sub button, and I'll see you soon. Take care.